Welcome to Location, the Local News Program. I'm Ian O'Neill. And I'm Melissa Menzer, and here's your news now. Bishop Thomas Gumbleton praised Cabrini's unique Justice Matters curriculum during a recent visit to campus. A Michigan native is known worldwide for his faith-based humanitarian work. Gumbleton's vision is to speak for those without a voice. His travels spanned many troubled countries, such as Haiti, Iraq, and Afghanistan. He worked with various classes on Wednesday, September 22nd, and spoke of his international issues and what students can do to better our troubled society. For more information, please visit thelocator.com. Business students at Cabrini are taking part in a new organization called Students in Free Enterprise, or SIF. SIF students will work together in small service project groups. The groups will have different tasks, including helping to raise money for orphans in Swaziland. Aside from community service, SIF allows students to network with peers and business leaders nationwide. Most students know the name Matt Holmes from the Today at Cabrini emails that announce campus events to the college community. Holmes is the webmaster for the college and also does improv comedy on the side. He performs his show around Philadelphia and recently did a show at the Philly Fringe Festival. To find out more information about Holmes and his show, visit mattandimprov.com and be sure to tune in next week when Matt joins Liz Scopoletti for Person of the Week. The bookstore on campus offers fair trade chocolate to the Cabrini community. In recent years, Cabrini has taken steps to bring more fair trade options to campus. The goal of fair trade products is to create a positive and long-term impact for artisans and farmers by giving them fair wages for their work while delivering great products to the public. A Mexican fair trade farm worker recently came to Cabrini to talk to students about his products projects to keep fair trade coffee available in the United States. With October being Fair Trade Month, Rigoberto Contreras Diaz's visit to Cabrini served to promote the idea of fair trade to the students. Diaz is a part of a coffee cooperative in Oaxaca, Mexico that consists of over 800 people and six different ethnic groups. Cabrini College alumni Megan Hurley accompanied Diaz to translate as well as share her personal story of bringing fair trade to Cabrini while she was a student. When the cooperative started 25 years ago, uh, the biggest problem was organizing and getting the money they needed to start um, to start the cooperative to start exporting their coffee and now 25 years later he said that they have um, they've been able to really succeed in that area and now they have a new project that is actually um, renewing their coffee fields and so that's taking out the old plants and the old soil and putting in new plants and new soil because they have fields that are over 60 years old and have been with the cooperative the whole time, and so now they want to redo them so they can continue to provide their, their high quality product. I started talking to Drew Neiman, who is the head of dining services here. Um, I, first I wanted to interview him for an article on fair trade, and then we set up weekly meetings to talk about fair trade and how they could start bringing um, certain fair trade items to campus and the first thing we focused on was coffee and he was really open to the idea and really enthusiastic and he talked to the right people at Sodexo and it started with fair trade coffee in Jasmine and then it was all fair trade coffee throughout the campus. The people who do the most work in producing what we consume are the people who are um, most likely forgotten in a lot of situations. So. Fair trade makes you pay attention to those who, what I think are the most important part of the process and the people who actually grow and harvest the crops that we use. So from the beginning, that's who I think about and that's who I still think about today and how um, justice needs to be served on both sides. So we pay the extra money because it's fair to them, because that's what we should do. Flu season is right around the corner, and Cabrini College Student Health Services is now offering the flu vaccine. This year's vaccine protects you from the H1N1 flu as well as two other common flu strands. The vaccine is inactivated, so you cannot get the flu from the vaccine. It is available now at the Student Health Services. For more information on the vaccine or Student Health Services, please visit cabrini.edu. And now let's take a trip around the world. Amidst the longest running unemployment streak South Africa has seen, there are no signs that the economy is improving. For over 10 years, there has been an increase in unemployed people. This has ranked South Africa the worst in the world. 
Due to the high unemployment rate, there has been a rise in crime, inequality, and social unrest. There is strong evidence that there was fraud involved in the recent Afghan elections. Video clips show the stuffing of ballots as well as the unlawful detention of election workers. In some instances, election workers have come forward admitting involvement in the fraud accusations. President Obama is continuing to press China to revalue its currency. In a recent two-hour meeting, the president sent a firm message to China saying, if the Chinese don't take actions, we have other means of protecting U.S. interests. Republicans in the House of Representatives are issuing new legislation called a Pledge to America. With hopes of becoming the majority by November elections, the goals outlined in the pledge include extensions of the Bush-era tax cuts as well as repeal of the new health care law. And now let's check in with Allie for your sports news. Thanks, Alyssa. Cabrini Fall Sports were at it again with another week full of wins. All five CSAC games played during Family Weekend on September 25th were won by each of the teams. Women's field hockey started the day off with an exciting overtime game against Marywood, winning 2-1. Women's soccer followed, also defeating Marywood 2-1, while over at Rosemont College, men's soccer picked up their first win of the season in overtime with a score of 2-1. Women's tennis crushed Immaculata University 9-0, and finishing off the day was women's volleyball, who beat Baptist Bible 3-1. The night before was a memorable one for Cabrini alumni, especially ones who played sports, as former men's head basketball coach and athletic director John Zeke became the latest and only inductee of Cabrini's Hall of Fame for 2010. Location reporter Melissa Webb brings you the highlights of the night's events. Friends? Family, students, alumni, staff, and faculty gathered together to witness the induction of Cabrini's most all-time winning basketball coach, John Zeke. On Friday, September 24th, Coach Zeke was formally inducted into the college's Hall of Fame. Family, friends, and colleagues reflected on Zeke's history while at Cabrini College. Building on these foundations, it did not take John Zeke long to have Cabrini College Athletics recognized as a highly successful program that soon became the envy of all our competitors. As young men, Coach Zeke talked to us about right and wrong, choices and consequences, pride, integrity, and family. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. John Zeke. My mother and my father taught me about hard work. My mother's gone. My dad's in failing health. He's not here tonight. Uh, we'd love that he could be here. Uh, we talk almost every day. Uh, but they taught me about hard work. And if you work hard, you will be successful. Reporting from the Dixon Center, I'm Melissa Webb. Back to you at the news desk. Switching over to Philadelphia sports, both the Phillies and Eagles had an extraordinary week. On Sunday, the Eagles picked up their second win of the season, destroying Jacksonville 28-3. Deshaun Jackson and Jeremy Macklin ran for a total of 236 yards and three touchdowns. The Eagles returned home in the highly anticipated game against Donovan McNabb and the Washington Redskins on Sunday. On Monday night, the Phillies clinched the National League East title for the fourth consecutive year after crushing the Nationals 8-0. Roy Halladay pitched his ninth complete game and fourth shutout of the year. October 6 marks the start of the MLB postseason and the road to what will hopefully be another World Series title for our Philadelphia Phillies. Thanks, Allie. And now let's check in with Danielle for your red carpet brands. Hey guys, Danielle here with your entertainment news. After its long anticipated arrival, the Facebook movie The Social Network hit theaters Friday and surprisingly received some rave reviews. I guess critics were not expecting to like the movie so much. In other news, Gloria Stewart, yes the woman who played the much older, much more wrinkled version of Rose Dawson from the movie Titanic, died on September 27th of unknown reasons. Do you really need a reason once you hit triple digits? Besides Titanic, Stewart was known for her roles in movies such as Poor Little Rich Girl, My Favorite Year, and Mass Appeal. Fun fact, she was also the oldest actress to ever win an Oscar. And now for your Album of the Week, brought to you by WIBF-FM, The Burn. What's 
up, everybody? I'm Joe Cahill. And I'm Nick Benetti. Welcome to another edition of Album of the Week here on Location. Uh, this week we have Minus the Bear with their new album, Omni. Yeah, Minus the Bear just dropped their fourth album, Omni. Uh, made a big splash with Highly Refined Pirates, but they're back and they've dropped a pretty respectable album, in my opinion, Nick. Definitely, definitely. Minus the Bear is back. Yeah, I mean, for those unfamiliar with the band, they've kind of got this, you know, solid indie rock vibe with a little bit of edgy electronica. Um, overall, it, it makes a really listenable sound. It's a very relaxing CD, uh, very listenable. Nick, your favorite song on the album is? Definitely My Time. It's the leading single, and I just think has more edgy and surprising effects coming through the whole song, and just, it's definitely a good song. Yeah, The Thief is my favorite track on the album. It's kind of got a darker vibe, a little bit more heavy with guitars, but really, really solid. Um, so definitely check this album out. I think it's worth a listen. Go to the album store or record store, whatever you prefer, and get this album. Definitely worth your money, and definitely check it out. Yeah, make sure to tune in to Location next week for more WIBF Album of the Week. Back to Danielle in the studio with more arts and entertainment. Well, that's all I have for you this week. Tune in next week for some more entertainment news. I'm Danielle McLaughlin. Back to you at the news desk. Well, that's all we have for you this week. Make sure to check us out on thelocorder.com and subscribe to our podcast on iTunes. I'm Melissa Menser. And I'm Ian O'Neill, and I hope you had some good news this week.